Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be looking at transition matrices. So these, this is a technique for being able to solve the probability of a Markov chain, but it's when we're only interested in the final outcome. So that's really important. So it's only interested in final outcome. So what I mean by that is, if you remember to when we looked at Markov chains and you had sort of like the tree diagram going like this, with the different stages. If you cared about what happened in these sort of middle stages at all, then you can't use transition matrices. Transition matrices are very useful and are able to find the probability quickly of sort of like the ends, if you can think about that. So if, for like example, this was uh, like Monday and this was Wednesday, and then let's say it's like Tuesday and things like that in between, then transition matrices would be able to tell you the probability of certain outcomes on Wednesday, but you wouldn't be able to say, what's the probability of having two wins and one loss, for example, because that would rely on looking at outcomes that aren't in the final outcome. So there are two um, major parts of the transition matrices, and that's the actual transition matrix itself, and then the initial condition. So firstly, you have to set up the transition matrix. So in general, the transition matrix sort of is a 4x4 four four matrix, uh, sorry, 2x2 two two matrix with four entries. So you have an entry there, entry there, entry there, and entry there. So what you have here uh, along this column is sort of like the A, which you can sort of think as the success. And then you can have here you can have uh, A dash, so that's like the failure. But as you remember in uh, Markov chains, there are two outcomes. So this represents one outcome and this represents the other. And then that goes down. But the important thing to note with these two is this is for the previous day or trial or outcome. So if you, whatever you want to calculate, this is the previous one. So you can think about it like that as A0, like the initial uh, one. So with Markov chains, you need to work out the probability of something given that the previous one. So if a stock again, the probability of winning given that they won the last one or given that they lost the last one. So up here is like the, the last one. So if they won the last one or if they lost the last one. Then over here we have, along this row, is the win from the one we care about. So like the win from the outcome that we're looking at, or this is uh, the loss. Um, the, like the not A, so like the, the loss or the failure, this is a success, but this is the term we're looking at. So this is very uh, abstract, but with an example it becomes a lot clearer. So I'll just show it there. So don't worry too much if this confuses you, but it is it is sort of the general layout. So if we get an example, this is one that we've previously done before. So it is a Markov chain. So a soccer team has a probability of winning equals 0 0.6 if they've won the previous game and 0 0.3 if they've lost the previous game. So we'll set up um, the, a table and then this will be able to tell us a transition matrix. So we'll start off with by saying that um, you have here you have the win of and, and then here you have the loss. But we have to remember that this is talking about the previous. Yeah? So this is a previous and this is the current. And then you win, then you have the loss. So in here, in these four, uh, four sections here, you put in the probabilities. So the probability of winning when you've just previously won is 0 0.6. So we can get that from going, well, it's 0 0.6 if you've uh, won previously, and then this is talking about the win. So it's a winning previously, and you've won, so that's 0 0.6. So 
if they've won previously, then the chance of losing is 0 0.4. We can get that by going 1 minus 0 0.6. So we get 0 0.4. Now, if they've lost previously, so they lost the previous game, but we're still talking about the win at the moment, so it's 0 0.3. So you can put 0 0.3 here. So that's if they've lost, then the chance of them winning is 0 0.3. And then we can work out the chance that they've, they're going to lose if they've previously lost is now 0 0.7. So you sub those values in. And if you've, it's a quick way to check if you've got, or a likely way to check if you've got it right, is that the columns must equal 1. The columns must equal 1. But the rows don't have to equal 1. As you can see here, that's 0 0.9 and that's 1.1. The reason why these have to add up to 1 is because if the previously they've won, so that was a win, then uh, no matter, there's only two current outcomes and a current outcome must occur. So if they've won previously, then they must win or they must lose. So therefore the probability must add up to 1. Uh, rather with this one, with if we're looking across the rows, that's looking at the current, which um, doesn't exactly have to equal to 1. So you set up this table, then we can say that the transition um, T, so that's the transition matrix, is equal to 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.7. Now it doesn't matter if you go win, win, loss, loss. You could go loss, win, loss, win. They do have to be in this way though, so it has to be win, loss, win, loss, or loss, win, loss, win. However, this will... It's normally convention is easier to write sort of the success or the win um, the first and then the loss or the failure because if you do it consistently then it makes more, a bit more sense. And when we're using the steady state, depending on how you set it up, you have to change it around. So it's easier no matter what you do, just try and do it consistent throughout all your questions that you do so you won't ever make a mistake. So here's the transition matrix. So 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and 0 0.7. Okay, so now we look at the second part, which is the initial, uh, the initial condition. So initial condition is a two by one matrix. So S is equal to that, where you have two inputs, and it's also sometimes called the state or the yeah, the initial state. Um, so the two, the initial condition is talking about uh, when in a question when you're given something. So if they say on Monday they won for the soccer, if on Monday they won the game on Monday, then you could sub in the initial condition because we don't even we don't have to put in um, into the matrix because we already know it. So there are two ones you can put in the initial condition. Firstly, you can put in the probabilities. And secondly, you can put in sort of the number of people, depending on the question. So with the probabilities, if they say on Monday the soccer team won, then you can then you, look, there's a hundred percent probability. that they won because it was given in the question that they have won. So 100% uh, probability is equal to 1 and so the chance of them losing is 0. So S, the initial state, initial condition, would equal 1, 0. So you can put, so in general, S is equal to the probability of the success over the probability of failure, assuming that you've set up the transition matrix like I did previously. So the probability of success on top, which is one, the probability of failure on the bottom. So a lot of the time they tell us um, they won their previous game, or another example, they, it rained the previous day, and so you can literally just sub in one, zero, or zero, one, as you know, 100% probability of these events occurring. Or another question could be that they have a 50% chance of winning one day. 
So they had a 50% chance of winning, then S would equal 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So the initial condition is when you know for certain the probabilities and it doesn't, it's not affected by the previous outcome, then you can sub it in and then work it out. Now the other one I said was the number of people. So here the number of people. So I'll just have this out. So if you remember with Markov chains, there are two general ones we're talking about work probability and then the other one is working out sort of how many people. So I previously used a uh, pizza example. So you can have um, like so, a certain number of people eat pizza or curry and then use the Markov chains to work out how many people in the future will eat pizza and curry depending on how many people previously. So you're still using probability, but rather than looking at probabilities, you're looking at the total um, number of people doing the different outcomes. So S is now equal to the number of people. Remember that that's just notation for the number. So number of people who have success over the number of people who have failure. So this was uh, the pizza and curry example. Uh, for example, let's say 50 people eat pizza and 80 people eat curry. And we're saying that success is equal to pizza. Remember, it doesn't matter which one we do. We just need to have consistency, consistency throughout the question then S is equal to 50 over 80. So that's how you set up the initial condition. And it becomes a lot easier once you do a few questions and you can see it applied. Then how does the transition matrix actually work? Well, we can say that the probability, the general formula is that S n is equal to t to the n by s0, where s0 is the initial condition. But what this basically says is that the probability uh, so the probability of success at trial n and then probability of failure at trial n is equal to t n times s 0. So if you have sort of question that says what is the probability You want to know that what is the probability of success and failure on Wednesday? Like given that dot 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 on Monday. So they tell let's say given that uh, like they won. Yeah. So given that they like won on Monday. Uh, so yeah. So on Monday. So that means we know that S zero refers to one zero like, or depending on the question. So S0 refers to Monday. So if we now want to know Wednesday, then Monday is given to us. So N is equal to 2. And that's quite important. And that's because Monday, you have Monday here, then you have Tuesday, and then you have Wednesday. So you can think about that as the initial condition. This can think about it like T1, and then Wednesday would be T2. And so when you look at questions, you need to work out what does n equal. That you get your calculator out, you set up t, you put t to the power of 2, times it by the initial condition, and it'll give you a 2 by 1 matrix as shown here, and you can say that the probability of uh, the success at on Wednesday is equal to whatever the number here is, and the probability of failure on Wednesday is whatever that number is here. So I highly suggest you look at the video looking at the example going through the transition matrix as it does seem confusing at first. However, once you do a few questions, you'll see that it is pretty formulaic and with practice, it becomes a lot easier.